the Joe Rogan experience. When you first started fighting, how much striking training had you done before you decided to compete in MMA? Because you had this wrestling yeah. base. Um, did you have any striking training growing up? Did you do any I did, boxing? I did some or? boxing. Yeah. And I did uh, some some karate too. I did mm -hmm. tank sudo. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did tank sudo for like a few years from the time I was like uh, 13 to like 16. That makes sense because you always had good kicks. Yeah. Yeah, like that Sean Salmon knockout. Yeah. Woo! But you know, I, I never I never utilized my kicks like I should have. And my mom would always be like every time, and Rashad, listen, Joe Rogan, <laughs> Joe, she always would say something that Joe Rogan said. Rashad, Joe Rogan said, you need to pass the guard, Rashad. And I'm like, <laughs> mom, I don't even know what the, what the guard is. So I need to pass the guard. Like, what? Oh my ah! gosh, that's hilarious! When I fought Sean Salmon, she she's the one who told me to throw Rashad, throw your kicks like Bruce Lee, Rashad. <laughs> and then when I threw the kick oh and knocked him goodness. down, and the next day I talked to her on the phone. She said, "Rashad, that was a good kick." And I was like, oh, "Okay," she said, but I don't like that dirty shit though. And I was like. Mom, what you talking about? Rashad, you knew he was knocked out. You didn't have to hit him again. Oh, wow. And I'm like, Your Ma, mom I'm said like, Ma, I can't, you can't tell. You just got to keep going. Like the, the referee say, don't stop until I stop you. And I was just in the fight. And she said, like, but still, Rashad, shit. <laughs> 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 that dirty shit. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Oh, I was kind of surprised that you were in head kicking more people unconscious after that. You know, I, th that's the thing, man. I, I needed I needed to really, really step out of my game and make sure I stepped out of my game more and more often. But I just, you know, after I switched switched things up and went and went from uh, you know Jacksons to to uh, to Florida, it was it was different because Mike Winklejohn, he was my guy. Like it it was like. Me and Mike Winklejohn uh, had a really good relationship, and he would uh, he would work with me. All, and we and, and a lot of times we would work together. It was like it was like a, a, a counseling session. We would just talk about life. You know what I'm saying? In between mm. in between stuff, we talk about everything, and uh, it was a fun training session. You know. And and that's when you know he'll instill in me all these different things. You know he'll be like, "Oh yeah, that that kick is gonna work. That kick is gonna work." You know, even with the overhand right when mm. I caught Chuck Liddell, he was telling me, "Oh yeah, that's the kick. That's the that's the punch that's gonna catch him. That's gonna catch him." That when I when I caught Chuck, the day before I was hitting that move because I was super nervous and I was hitting the overhand right and the left hook combination. And then you say, "Oh yeah, that that's 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 going to be the punch. You know, you're going to hit him with that, and you're going to knock him out, and and I'm not going to be able to get into the cage and congratulate you." That's what he said to me, word wow. for word. And I'm just like, "No way!" And then it happened. I looked at him, I'm just like, "Oh shit!" It happened just like you said. That was like a gunshot. I remember that shot. I remember you landed that shot. The smack of your yeah. fist hitting Chuck, and then seeing Chuck crumble. I was like, "Holy shit!" Was that your most satisfying victory? Yeah, I think so. I, 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 it definitely was just because, like, going into that fight, Joe, like, the, the media sometimes can be so damn disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. they were just kind of like, the questioning was like, you know, what have you even done to fight a guy like Chuck Liddell? Like, I mean, people were asking you that? Yeah, I mean, pretty much in so many words. Like, you know, what have I even but done? But you had to already, at that point in time, had you fought for the title? Bef no, that was before you no, fought before for the title. Fought, yeah, before I fought for the title, and I just, you, it was the fight before the fight before, right? The fight before, yeah. I only got a chance to fight for the title because I beat Chuck Liddell. Chuck Liddell oh. was supposed to fight for the title. That I was a serve up to fight for the title. Oh wow! Yeah, wow. Yeah, that was that was a serve up. Well, the media was a little sloppy back then. Yeah, so so they there's some really good guys out there now and gals that are covering MMA where they're real journalists. They really are like right. real sports journalists. But back then, it was like anybody <sighs> with a camera who liked fights. Well, there's also a lot of people that were trying to get attention just by being douchey. Yeah, there was a lot of douchey sports guy talk. Yeah. I fucking hate that stuff. That that was driving me crazy. Yeah. Would they be real disrespectful to fighters, real dismissive of fighters? So going into the fight, I, I felt that disrespect, and I was like, you know what, man? All right, I'm like, I don't care what happens. I'm like, this, like, I, I got, I got a, a leash. 
at least give a good showing for myself, you know? Mm. And, and that's and that's all I really cared about doing. You know, I went out, I, I walked out to the song, um, Immortal Technique is called. Uh, that's my boy. Of, yeah, Immortal Technique. I love that yeah, dude. He's, he's beast, my friend. Man. Oh, yeah, 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 he's cool, man. I love him. Yeah, I came out to the song uh, Point of No Return. Mm. And, and that song just really solidified everything I was feeling at that moment, you know, like, like it, you know, there's a verse in there that says, you know, w the place that I'm from doesn't exist anymore. And I knew after I walked out to that fight, you know, I, life would never be the same, mm. whether I won or lost. So that was the big moment. That for was you. the big moment. There was no, the, I, I was not going to be the same Rashad after that fight, no matter what happened. A moral technique has such great lyrics. Man. Oh my He's so smart. So a smart, smart Just, dude. I'm mean, so politically aware, yeah. and geopolitically aware. It's, it's he's got crazy. so much depth to his lyrics. I love that dude. Yeah, he's he's like one of those guys you listen to and you just kind of keep putting it back. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He like, just say, oh did shit, he just say that shit. He's got a lot of oh shit lyrics. Yeah, like, like oh shit. A lot of things that he says, you know, you go and you re look it up afterwards. Like okay, you know, yeah. he he definitely had me uh, looking up some things after I listened to him. <laughs>